yes, this is uh, aluminium and um, like I was saying before, a CO2 laser will reflect off aluminium about 98%. And I will start off um, with the product as it is, without any modifications at all. From there we will proceed to do all the modifications necessary to make this a very safe machine and a machine that can work quite efficiently and is a good starting point for anybody who wants to work with CO2 lasers. Ah, I'll just fetch the camera in. I'll just lean it over a bit so you might be able to see this in sort of looking. I don't know whether you can see here. There's one loose screw which, oh sorry, there's one loose nut there just floating around. Um, I'm going to have to have a look see where that comes from. And uh, you know there's poly bits of polystyrene around the, the inside of the machine that I'm going to have to uh, vacuum out. So um, you know everything looks okay. Everything's covered with this blue plastic film and that needs to be taken off as well before you start firing the laser up. So uh, let's have a look in the electrical cabinet. Okay so I've gone handheld now and um, let's have a look. The wiring looks well connected there and incidentally um, earlier in this video you heard me speak about um, China export quality. Well that's what this sign means here. CE, China export. Everything looks okay there. It's actually covered in this sooty grey stuff. That's pollution from China actually. This is the power supply for the laser and everything else in here actually. Uh, it gives it a 5 volt and a 24 volt um, supply. The main board, now I'll turn this around so you're not looking at it upside down. That's the main circuit board and the light will come on on the camera. And looking at it it's it's pretty tidy it's not bad but oh over the back there there is a inherent problem as the light comes on on the camera so I can point this out to you this here that I'm pointing to oh, this let's get that wire out of the way Okay, that little screw there with a wire going to it, that is the main earth to the bodywork of this unit. And if you notice, it's done up or tightened up onto a painted panel. That is a serious bad earth situation. Um, this laser operates on a I think you'll find it's about 16 to 18 thousand volts that's enough to arrest your heart if there's a problem so we will we're going to address that that's going to be one of the the first job that we do we, we're going to address that and um, vacuum all the bits and pieces out of here there's another nut there Look, another loose nut there. Uh, camera light is flashing on and off. You see that? Loose nut just lying in the bottom. Don't know what it's off. But these are the things you look for. Basically, it's, uh, if I can say good value for money, <laughs> if you are prepared to do a little bit of work with it before ever you switch it on. 
So we're going to start by having a look at that um, the earth. I'm going to start by looking at the earth um, connection there. Oh good god. It's actually not even done up. Look at that. Not even done up. Well that doesn't surprise me. And this is the other side of it. Okay, well <clears throat> so what I'm going to so what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to take this out from here, remove the paint, and I'm gonna put a little um so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, that apart and I'm going to clean the paint off and uh, I'm going to put a little spring washer on there which will bite into the metal. That's the proper way of making an earth connection to the, to the bodywork and it's very important. And something else which is very important, because this is operating at, you know, nearly 20,000 volts, you need a secondary earth. Right, so I'll be running a small cable from this to the shed, okay, the outside of the shed, because this is all, all earthed, okay. You've got to give it a secondary earth, just in case the, the main one fails. So that's, that is what this uh, additional earth is for. It's a secondary earth that you're worth to your your structure if it's steel. If it's not, you've got to drive a copper rod in the ground outside and run a secondary cable to this. So you know, lasers just aren't a simple plug and play thing. Alright? Definitely not the K40s. Hope you can see in there, the paint's been taken off and there's a washer behind the, uh, the lug. Uh, it's a spring washer so it bites into the lug and bites into the material of the uh, housing. And I'll just show you the other side. On the other side, paint's been taken off here because there's a little lug here as well if you wish to use rather than plug into here. You can solder a wire onto that. Okay, so we have water inlet and return, which goes into a big uh, four gallon tank in there, of which there's two gallons or 10 litres of distilled water. Mains is plugged in, secondary earth. Uh, I've actually checked these plugs out and they're okay, electrically okay. They don't look very nice, but uh, they're actually electrically okay. And I've got the water pump connected into that. And I was just about to switch it on and uh, plug the USB in. And oh dear, you can't plug the USB in because it doesn't line up. Um, I'm either going to have to take some out of this panel. Oops. I'm either going to have to take some out of this panel or uh, do some other adjustment but it just doesn't, uh, you can't get a USB cable in it so it doesn't line up with the hull so we've got to do something about that before we go any further just 
just a word before we go any further. Uh, if you're not sure about the electrics, it's probably a good idea that you get a qualified electrician to check it out for you and do all the electrical uh, problem solving and repairs and get him to certify it safe before you start using it. Okay, in the very beginning of this video when we started unpacking this K40 you saw me pick out the CD or DVD uh, disc with the programs to run this machine uh, it is my suggestion not to use it. There's better free programs out there and this is my suggestion uh, as indeed you know a lot of people do use these for the K40s. Uh, first thing K40 Whisperer uh, developed from Scorchworks it will talk to the, the board in the K40 laser. Now K40 Whisperer works alongside another program called Inkscape, another free program. Uh, so they work side by side and they are perfect for the K40 and indeed other programs as well. Okay, so let's switch it on for the first time and well see if it works I suppose make just make sure your lasers off what do you know <laughs> 